old boot on my leg. So yeah, I, can't even, I can't get a pair of pants on. <laughs> I put on put on a, a beautiful billowy skirt to have the cat chase it. it yeah, it's <laughs> not really high on my list. So yeah. I'm I'm in pajama pants because they're wide leg and they'll fit over the boot. Yeah. Well, bless you, Lana. I'm glad that you are are um, uh, at least sitting upright. Uh, uh, yes. You look lovely. Uh, Thank you. It looks like you have a comfortable chair behind you. So that's yes, I do. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're going to get started. Okay, I'm just going to holler one. Nick, can I have my cup of coffee? Just so I can have a sip of coffee. <laughs> Totally understand. Also, if I don't finish a cup of coffee, you're really not me. I'll start snoring in the middle of an interview. And no, you know. we can't have that. I mean, that that could uh, go viral for the wrong reasons, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Film star Alana Wood nods off during panel. Yeah, exactly. Was really so nice. excited over the interview that she fell asleep. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Very good. Hmm. <sighs> Looks like the Monsterama Con uh, folks uh, are big coffee drinkers as well. I, you know, I don't drink coffee often so that when I do, it really counts. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah no, I, I drink like two mugs every morning. There you I, go. Can't, I can't do anything until I, I have two big cups of coffee. Well, Lana, you might be a uh, you might be an addict in that case. I might be it's scary. Very good. I, I assume that we are now broadcasting. It's a little past the hour, a couple minutes past the hour. Oh, good. Okay. Um, I um, thank you for doing this live. I appreciate that. Um, My pleasure. I uh, I got all dressed up, but uh, you look fabulous. Fantastic. Very dapper. Thank you. thank you, Lana. Thank you very much. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that I look good for uh, the great Lana Wood. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I we uh, we talked uh, during uh, last last time's uh, SpyCon. I guess it was two years ago now. Yes, having fun, and it even flies when you're not necessarily having a blast. Yeah. But uh, I uh, I really enjoy talking to you then, and I I've been looking forward to talking to you now. It's 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 uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Oh, I hope so. I uh, if it doesn't. Um, just cut it, just, cut you know, it. edit, edit, edit to the high I'm Lana Wood and cut from there, you know. <laughs> nice talking to you, Lana, and, you know, yeah. end it. Yeah, that'll be that. Very oh, good. Oh, yeah. That'd, that'd be like swell. Everybody will love that. <laughs> well, it looks like we're definitely on the air now. Lana, what? what uh, last time that we talked, I, I recall that we probably talked about James Bond for maybe about 10 minutes of the collective three hours that we talked Right. And um, it just seemed like the natural course of conversation to me. Uh, so I, I guess so. My, my only real question for you today is, is uh, what, do you, what do you want to talk about, Lana? <laughs> well, not the State of the Union, that's for sure. No, I Let's think we can talk about anything else. Absolutely anything else. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I, I remember coming away with uh, last time was that it's it's very hard for any of us to have any fun anymore because you had all of it. <laughs> oh, without question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly do. I have so much fun that I can't sleep at night because I'm still winding down from all the fun I've had. <laughs> yeah, <that>. right. <laughs> sure. Well, you you've definitely had some some high points over the years, right? I mean, there there is some there is some, there is some 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 real joyful moments that you you've had in your life for sure. Yeah, I try to think about those a lot. I'm, I'm so far I'm 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 still trying to come up with one, but I know they're there. Yeah, there's stories. I know that the stories they're, are there in I'm the in the you, mind of one of wood. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, there are lots and lots of those. Yeah, indeed. What do you think was your your favorite experience in showbiz? Like if you if you had to maybe make it like a top five, what do you think those would be? Hmm. Wow, that's hard. You know, because you go from show to show, different crews, different cast. You 
you feel like you're very close to, you know, a couple of people on the show and then they're gone and you find that your times don't really coincide. You end up not seeing them as often as you'd like. And then you drift on to another show and go through the same things all over again. So I think it's rather a feat to keep a close friend. And um, my favorite moment, wow, there's there's so many, but I, I still will always hold dear working on QB7, which was the first mini series ever, 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 ever from the Leon Uris book about the, uh, the Nazi war criminals. And I got to work with Ben Gazzara which oh, wow. meant the world to me. And Anthony Hopkins was in the film and Juliet Mills. And I, I, it just meant a lot to me. I wanted, I wanted to be a part of that cast. Um, it meant something to me. Yeah, I would so, imagine that it, it probably becomes kind of a blur, but I would, I would think that especially by that point in your career, it was a matter of like, you probably really appreciated that, that the time would pass and that it was sort of a, a, a something that you were doing at the time very much, right? I don't know if you're really aware of that because you are so, or I am so focused on whatever that character is, who that, that character is, and enjoying working with the people to see what they're going to bring because you really cannot about dialogue and uh, really act to a blank wall. It just, it doesn't work. Um, so what you are given is just as important as what you have planned to give. So it, it varies, you know, there's some people that you really connect with and, um, and have a, a, a good on-screen relationship and there have been a couple of blank walls out there too. <laughs> but, you know, the James Bond film will always be an amazing point for me. That and The Searchers. Yeah. Because I feel that both of those films will always remain in the public eye. The Searchers is a classic. I mean, you, you, you can't fault anything about The Searchers. It's just a a beautiful amazing film and i'm so proud that i was a part of that and um the bond film gee i wish i could redo that role would they kind of like let me dub <laughs> i like there are a lot of other things i'd like to do with that but i think i was i was so overly thrilled to uh to be part of it that um that i was a little nervous you yeah know? I don't know so i mean that um, was especially by then i mean it was sean connor was already a real icon in that role by that time absolutely yeah it wasn't it wasn't like let's see if this james bond thing works <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't yeah that thought never entered my mind <laughs> yeah. well and you're a, you're a fan of the the series and the the books too right oh it was all the books that I had read that um, really gave me my connection. I mean, I I just wanted I wanted to be in that movie. It was another one of those. I got to do it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm big Ian Fleming fan. Yeah, I mean that that had to have just been a really thrilling experience. It was. It was. It was nerve wracking. It was thrilling. It was. Um, it was so many things, you know. Um, if I if I knew that it was gonna stay with me for the rest of my life, I, I really would have tried harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, who knew? Yeah, you you um uh, the, there's the 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 saying that uh, the theater teacher that I had in high school used to say was uh, there's no small roles, only no. small actors. Yeah. And you're very memorable on that movie. You're, you're really the first thing that I think of when I think of that movie, even before I knew you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, the amount of fan letters that I get to this day are incredibly flattering to me. Um, a little overwhelming, 
Um, and I'm just, I, I'm so thrilled that people really love plenty, poor plenty, <laughs> <laughs> poor plenty. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it was pretty terrific. It was pretty terrific to do. Even though I didn't enjoy being thrown off the platform in the wee hours of the morning in a, in a pair of transparent undies, you know. Yeah, right. And that was really you, right? That wasn't a That summer. was, no, no, that was me. That, those were the good old days when there were a lot of technical tricks. That wasn't one. Uh, the other technical trick uh, bit of hocus pocus that they used was my scene where I am dead, oh. tied my ankles tied to a block of cement on a piece of bent rebar. Uh, what they decided to do there was tie my ankles to a cement block and piece of rebar and throw me in a pool. So that was um, that was a, a feat of technology. Yeah, no, uh, no, no cinema trickery there. In new, yeah. <laughs> yeah. nope. Yeah, Hollywood failed Lana Wood that day. That's no good. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad that you survived the experience, even if Plenty did not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How long did it take for you to, to complete your shooting on that movie? Um, well, there would be days when I wouldn't shoot, and then days that I would go back, and then we would have to stop early because Sean would have to play golf before the sun went down. That was part of everything. Had to get on that golf course. So it was dragged out a bit. And then one time I had, I think, like um, five days off. And I said, I'm, I'm going home. I'm taking my silly cats that I had traveled with and taking them home. Got a cat sitter and uh, <laughs> relax, relax at home because I'm not a gambler and I don't drink. And I so Las Vegas, there are only so many stores in which you can shop. And, and then you've got all these clothes that you don't know what to do with um so i went home <laughs> so in total uh probably took three weeks maybe longer counting my my off days yeah that's excellent that is funny that connery had to uh go and go and play golf he was cool. uh, at a point in his career especially on a bond movie where i guess he could decide uh, oh yes to do that oh, or <laughs> Did you go along well with them? Was it a, a good experience? Yeah, it was terrific. I knew Sean before. I, I had met him uh, in London and actually had dinner at his home when he was married to Diane uh, oh. Cilento. And um, yeah, in Putney. He had a house in Putney. I don't know if he still has it. His main residence is now in the Bahamas. Right. Um, but yeah, I'd had dinner with them. And, and uh, then they'd come into London one time where I was staying and we all got together again. And uh, it was very nice. So I felt like, oh good, I've got one friend on the set. And basically other than wardrobe and makeup, and makeup. those are usually my friends. <laughs> so he did remain my one friend on that show. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a, a real sort of a, a showing of whether or not somebody is sort of a Somebody that works in, in acting and films is sort of a, a down-to-earth person as how well they get along with the, the crew and such. And I can imagine that you probably were, were one of those people. Oh, the crew's, the crew's the best. Yeah. They, they are. They're, you are reliant upon every single one of them. And uh, crew's very hardworking, you know. Um, a Bond film can almost unfold by itself, but not not without the crew, it can't. You know, the first thing, of course, that it means everything to me is the writing, the uh, the lines, the the flow of the script. Everything's got to be there. But um, yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of the crew. Very good. We have a we have a question from one of our viewers. Okay. I have vetted. No. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Did I, I answered the question? The answer is no. The answer let's, is no. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if that lines. This is like uh, that that game <laughs> ad libs that kids play. Let's see. Okay. Uh, anonymous viewer asks, 
The Searchers is one of my favorite films. You were very young, but do you have any memories of working on it? I Hello? remember ev everything about The Searchers, every single moment from the interview for it and being in a big, seemed like a very dark office. And John Ford was behind this huge wood desk. And I basically wanted to hide under the desk. Um, I remember the car trip from the train to uh, the location and um, where we were going to stay, which was above a trading post. I remember the sand, I remember turning on water and having it run orange for a while until the sand would come out of the system. Oh, wow. John Wayne's, Allen Berry's, black currant pastilles that he loved, that I loved too. Um, Ken Curtis's whittling little animals and cars and things. And the, the amazing Jeffrey. I remember every single thing about it. I remember what my clothing felt like wow. and my dog, Chris. <laughs> and John Ford, dog. John Ford hated me. <laughs> <laughs> he really, he really did. He spoke to me one time, yeah. once. Well, and you were, uh, you were a kid. How old were you then? Um, eight. Yeah. So yeah, he John Ford doesn't seem like the kind of person who would have been a, a kid person. I guess so. That's not. Nah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Certainly nah. not. Lana Wood can confirm. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet I can. <laughs> That's not that he was mean he was just very gruff yeah. and didn't really you know interact with me so yeah. he and might have just not been able to to compute with kids i think a lot of well times. also what do you say to perfection <laughs> you know what, you know, what, what, what do you do? how how would you alter the mona lisa yeah uh, exactly you arrived at eight fully formed and that was it he trusted you to get out of the way. You and your dog, Chris. Me and uh, my dog, Chris, yes. <laughs> performed as well as anyone ever could. And there was... There was <laughs> no, it really it really meant a lot to me. And I remember everything. Ward Bond being bitten by a scorpion and being stuck in our big communal dining room um, by a sandstorm where we couldn't leave oh because God. it was blowing that heavily. Um, there isn't anything I don't remember about the searchers. Natalie getting a sunburn, uh, listening to Indian chanting at night <laughs> from my, my window. I could hear them. Wow. Um, it, was, it was like being on another planet. I'd never been anywhere, yeah. you know, at that point. That was my first foray into everything. Yeah, that's so, amazing. And did you say you were bit by a scorpion? Yeah, Ward Bond was bit by a scorpion, and oh, wow. they called the medic came racing out, and somebody said, "Get the kid off the set!" And they, you know, grabbed me and removed me because I was just standing there watching. Yeah, there wasn't anything else to do. <laughs> um, you know, play in the sand. Yeah, I'm past that. But yeah. thank you for the offer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there were. It was. Um, it was wonderful. It was really, 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 really memorable. Yeah. Yeah. When you're a kid that age, it's, it's, you know, I, I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but I don't know what I had for lunch yesterday. And I, I only kind I of know what you had for lunch yesterday, but I'm not telling. Oh man. I wish you would. Cause I, I'm really, <laughs> really, really bothers curious. you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it probably was, was uh, plant based. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, for lunch, I know what I had today. But I would imagine that that that's sort of a universal thing. But you remember things when you were a child so, so very vividly. Most things, most things. Yeah. 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 Remember that. Your, your first. I remember, I remember that as a very young child, I um, I was a drug dealer. Oh, wow. Yep. I had a little red wagon and I used to go door to door selling grass. <laughs> that I had pulled from my front yard. <laughs> I I don't know. I have I have no no explanation for that whatsoever. Did so we can we can stuff? move right along. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? I guess. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. What came next for you after the searchers? Do you remember the next project as vividly? 
Um, I remember that um, Playhouse 90 was a big show at the time. And I worked with John Cassavetes and Dana Winter in um, a show. I played her as a child in the beginning of the show. Um, I remember doing Summer and Smoke um, theater at, out here. When I was a kid, I did uh, worked with Good Heavens. Walter Matthau was my dad. There was a show called Climax. Oh yeah. And Jack Lemon was my dad. Um, I had a terrific part in that. Um, a lot of television. I did a lot of TV when I was a, a child. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, Climax, I think we probably talked about this last time now that you mention it. Uh, Climax, if I'm not mistaken, I think was the show where the first adaptation of James Brown or James Bond, rather not James Brown, James Bond uh, came out to the public. He was a, uh, an American agent in that called Jimmy Bond. And they did an adaptation. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, very interesting that that would be the case. Sort of yeah. a, a circular circular uh, uh, situation that you would end up in a Bond movie after having been on that show. Right, right. Um, I'm always out a window. I don't know what the deal is, but <laughs> I, I, I get tossed out a window. Searchers, tossed there's, out a window. Yeah, there's just something about it. Forever, tossed out a window. <laughs> I did a uh, show called, um, the heck was it? It was with Brian Dennehy. Um, and they tossed me out a window. I stood on a ledge for oh half gosh. the show. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's windows, windows, not good anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. And uh, of course you were also on paid in place. Oh yes. Oh yeah. yes. How was that? That was really um, an event. Every single day that was an event. I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah a lot really? of person, a lot of different personalities. We were all very young and feisty. Um, yeah, we basically drove a lot of people crazy. I know I certainly did. Yeah, so, nice. but it was, you know, it was wonderful. I I've seen a couple of episodes. Somebody people send me clips and episodes and things, and I watched a couple of them and I said, "Wow, what a well written show." Yeah, that was. I mean, it, it was really, really. Yeah, from what I've seen, very clever, especially for the time. Oh yeah, very clever, very yeah. very good. I Intense. saw uh, a scene with you and uh, Ryan O'Neill, and and Mia Farrow was in the scene as well. Seeing the three of you together, it was sort of like in a, uh, like a like a soda shop. Kind oh, of. that's where I worked. Yeah. That was yeah. the diner. That's excellent. Yeah. Hey, that was my job. That's excellent. And you kind of, you, you cornered Ryan O'Neill and you were kind of giving him what for. And I was like, right on. That's what you need to do. <laughs> well, see, I was running after Ryan O'Neill that entire show, even though I was married. So, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> chin doesn't fall far. Oh, no, I wasn't going to say that. Okay, never, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. We have another question from the peanut gallery. Uh, Bill Kanas, okay. I believe I said that right. If not, I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, it said you were delightful and diamonds are forever. How did you feel about having some scenes that you filmed lost in the editing? Oh, I was so heartbroken. I was so upset. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't see that all of that had been edited out until I went to a theater to see oh. it for the first time. That's an and awful I made theory. the mistake of putting my box of popcorn on the ground next to my seat. And I leaned over to grab my popcorn and I sat up and went, I'm dead. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, that's, that's a drag. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was really upset. But I, I got to tell you that the, the lovely Guy Hamilton, who I, I adore, um, was nice enough to call me and say, you know, Lana, I'm really sorry. I know how you must feel. And and I wasn't that happy with it either, speaking for himself. And he said, but it was a matter of time, timing and not slowing down the pace. And whereas, you know, it, it built my character to a better degree. It just, um, they, had the, they had the cut stuff and it turned out to be plenty. Yeah. But yeah, I was heartbroken. I really was heartbroken. 
Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad that they don't still have the, the footage, right? Because with things now, they can do bonus bonus scenes and yep, yep, and on, sort of on all the, uh, the the DVDs that they issue now, the uh, the bonus bonus footage. Boy, it'd be great if I could speak. Um, <laughs> is all is all there? So yeah. at least people always say it didn't make sense. What happened here? What happened there? And I well, it was cut out. Yeah. So, yeah. well, if I were a rich man, we would recreate the scenes. Yep. Yeah, we would. We would <laughs> With more. somebody else playing <laughs> <through. laughs> I think we could we could use you, or, or we could you could, we could dub your voice. We could maybe make an animated version. I could do the voice. Yeah. I could do the voice. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's watching, let's make that happen. All right. Yeah. Let's please, Barbara Broccoli. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, it's with things like they are. I think animation will be a, a, a bigger and bigger thing going forward since nobody has to be in the same room. Uh, I find I, I just that, that's heartbreaking to me because I also I, I wait for my favorite shows to come back and I wait and I wait yeah. and I wait. Yeah, it's going to be a while, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Looks like we have another good question. Uh, Charles Anderson says, hi. Hi. Work... Hi, Charles. You worked with Rosalind Russell and Jack Hawkins. What was she like to work with on Five Finger Exercise? Um, I didn't have any actual scenes with her, but um, everybody was very pleasant. I, I did have a problem with Max. Maximilian Shell. Um, so um, I wasn't real happy about that. I was also on the set alone and I was only like 14 years old, but my mom couldn't accompany me. So she um, she sent me with a neighbor boy who was 18, who wasn't interested in hanging around to take care of a 14 year old. He was oh. he was off looking for, you know, older, cuter girls. So I never saw Gary again. Gary Patterson, if you're out there listening, he's actually a famous illustrator now, Gary. Oh, but, what? Uh, yeah, he didn't take good care of me because Max Shell came on a bit and made me very uncomfortable. I was I'm glad to hear that. Very teary. Yeah. That's rough. Very different world back then for everybody, really. It's it's like a different yes. place. You know, I mean, it's it's it like was. a deal. Yep. But I mean, the bright side, you know, last time we, we told some stories about uh, you and your sister sort of uh, having fun on the beach. There is a story you told me about. Uh, do, you, do you want to tell that one about the restaurant that you tried to get into and the hilarity that ensued? Well, Natalie, Natalie had a friend over. We were sharing a, a beach house in Malibu and uh, her friend David Lang, who was Hope Lang's brother, had uh, had spent the night, actually he fell asleep on the sofa and we just left him there. Um, but the next the next morning after breakfast and pulling ourselves together, we decided that we were gonna take a long walk on the beach and get some air and chat. But I had brought a, a dart gun, the rubber tip dart gun I had brought with me because I thought it was great fun to keep shooting him in the head with it. And at one point he had enough and he took it away from me. Couldn't understand why, but you know, some people are less tolerant than others. Um, anyway, we kept we kept walking, and uh, we got to the point where we said, "Wow, you know, we we're really far far from the house, and let's go have a drink." And we were looking around, and there was a a long set of stairs to a restaurant with all these glass windows, and we could see a bar area. So we tromped up the stairs and knocked on the door and the bartender opened the door and we said hi we're we've been walking along the beach we'd like to come in and have a drink and he said we well, have to go around to the front and we said well we can't because there's no access to the road where we are mm -hmm. so there's no way we can get to the front and he and he he became you know very dismissive and and just sort of uh not terrifically nice so we we were going to turn and walk down the stairs. And, and I said, David, get the gun. <laughs> and well, the bartender heard that and 
slam that barred door shut as fast as he could. So then we had this wonderful idea that Natalie and I hatched is we ran down the beach as far as we could until we saw access to the road. So we were finally able to get up on the road and get to a payphone. If you guys don't remember those, those were like boxes that were in public and, and you would put coins in these little slots and pick up yeah. the phone, make a call. So we uh, got the number for the restaurant and uh, we called, we had David say, this is deputy so-and-so from the Malibu Sheriff's Department. And we're looking for two young women and a young man who are armed and dangerous and have held up a liquor store in Malibu Canyon. And if you see them, well, of course, the bartender went off saying they were here and they visited and that. And David said, well, I recommend that you uh, have every uh, patron move away from the glass windows because they are armed um, and get them, you know, out of the restaurant. And we'll we'll send a couple of patrol cars out. How, when did you say you saw them? How long ago? Thank you. We'll be right there. Well, we laughed our proverbial butts off all the way back to the house, even though it was a long way and we didn't get to have a drink. But um, yeah, we we held up the albatross restaurant. What can I tell you? <laughs> the albatross. The albatross. Yeah. yeah. What a game! <laughs> right? That's so yep. fun. Yeah, that's really excellent. That's really excellent. Yeah, Natalie and I used to become very mischievous, so we had we had a lot of fun. We were very silly together. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that it was just the, the two of you had to have just been a, a real pair. Uh, and <laughs> yep. So great. So very good. Uh, we've got one more question. Uh, okay. This is from another anonymous viewer who asks, What is this anonymous? I don't know. What is I, this? I think I want a, yeah, we I need want a to, first name. <laughs> we're going to name this person Chuck. Okay, and Chuck. Chuck asks, You are on two episodes of Wild Wild West and a night gallery. Any memories yes. of those experiences and working with Robert Conrad and Ross Martin? I love Bobby Conrad. Love, love, love him. Um, he was on another show. He was on a series at Warner Brothers when Natalie was under contract there. So she knew him and and I would come from school with a friend. Oh, you've got a baby. Oh, oh my oh. If I, didn't oh, pick up I don't care about Bob there. Conrad. Look, yeah. oh, I would kiss that face. Oh, oh beautiful. Look, it's like let, let me go. Oh, look at that face. Oh, name please. It's that <laughs> what is that? That's not Chuck. No, this is Paco. Yeah, this is Paco. Paco. Paco, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Say, Dad, let me down. I don't yeah. care. But uh, no, I was I was friends with the, there again with with Bob Conrad. I was very, you know, happy to be working with him. Ross Martin is just was just the loveliest man in the world. Uh, Bob and I were very comfortable together, and uh, so when he would stick me on the back of his horse and I'd say, "You're really going to run me down that hill," and he goes. Oh, just hang on. You'll be fine. Quit worrying, dude. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. The The kissing scenes were funny because it's like, this is my friend. I know this. This is Natalie's friend. But I, I loved working. The Wild Wild West meant there another, another show that meant a lot to me because I got to be lighthearted. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't steal funds. I didn't steal husbands. I didn't do anything like that, which is yeah. how I would normally cast. Thrown so out of I zero loved, window. I loved Wild Wild West. I loved everything about it. And great names there again, Dixon O'Shaughnessy. Great name. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ross, um, Ross was a wonderful, very thoughtful, intelligent guy. I end up, ended up seeing his son um, was uh, a chiropractor. And I used to go see him once a week and he would readjust me. And I remember him saying, you're so thin. I'm surprised you have muscle tone. I said, thanks a lot. 
<laughs> Gee, great. Well, I feel better now. Yeah. Okay. But no, it was, I had love Wild Wild West. I just loved everything about it, everything. And Night Gallery, that was a very trippy show to do. I have the the uh, the painting that they made of of me all torn oh, apart right. by by Cloris Leachman um, and Broderick Crawford. Um, it was it, it was great fun. Cloris is is wonderful. I mean, she's very spontaneous. And um, when we were rehearsing, she would go to certain spots on the set. And they set the camera up, and everything was they lighted with our our uh, stand-ins and everything. And then we went to shoot, and she wouldn't go to the same marks. So we would start again. We'd do another take, and she would go other places. And by the third take, the director stopped and said, Cloris, you got to decide where you're going to stand, because we would like to have you in camera. So <laughs> she, was, you, um, she was a trip. Yeah. Did you ever see her on a show called Raising Hope that was on a few years ago? It was I didn't. Like it was a, a one camera sitcom and it was it was about a, a young guy who uh, became a father accidentally at a very early age. And she was kind of like the crazy grandma. Like she would, like, <laughs> you know, come out of the bathroom with like a bra on her head kind of thing. Oh, like she, funny. Like, kind of, oh, funny. She was by far the best thing about that show. And it was a fun oh, show. Oh, I'm sure. And it really was one of those situations where it was like, Cloris Leachman has probably been like this all along. And the oh, yeah. public had no idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. She just sort of, she is out there. She is in that character. She, she's just, she's, she was really a trip. She was really a trip. I remember the first thing she said to me is she walked up to me and she said, I used to have a figure like yours. <laughs> I was like, well, I, you know, I knew I got it from someone, but I wasn't <laughs> aware who. You stole it from Cloris Leachman. Yeah. That's excellent. Very I good. Very it was, good. But I, yeah, I love that. And I, 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 yeah, that was great. I had a wonderful time on every show, every show. I love Felony Squad that I did with Richard Dreyfus. I mean, oh. that was, that was fabulous. Um, yeah, it was called The Last Man on Earth. Yeah. And when he was dying at the end, they took my handcuffs off and said, go over and say a few, say something to him, say a few words. He's, he's not going to be with us much longer. So I went there and leaned over his body and said, well, I wouldn't have gone with you if you were the last man on earth. <laughs> so it was another one of those really sweet characters that I play. <laughs> but it's fun. You know, yeah. it's all, it's all fun. Yeah. So, so did yeah. you ever feel like you had been sort of typecast against your will or did you just Oh choose? yeah. Oh, very much so. Very, very much so. Um, I said to my agent, I had this very powerful agency, and and uh I said I said to him one time, um, you know, could you please get me cast as the girl next door? And he said, if you're the girl next door then they must live in a very racy neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I said, really, thank you so much. I, I can see why I never get put up for those roles, but thank you. Yeah, you, you uh, and I mean this as a compliment, you certainly never really seemed to project that look. That was, that was certainly not. Uh, I could. Don't forget yeah. the Beretta I did. Did you ever see the Beretta? I didn't, no. Ah, I was Sister Olive, and oh, I wow. played tambourine and sang with the Salvation Army, and I had literal Coke bottle bottom glasses on my face and a nun's habit and wow. my hair all slicked back, and um, I was Sister Olive. It was great. I got dumped over the side of a building because I was I was raped first, and then because I couldn't see well, my glasses were knocked off. They had a problem trying to find the killer and yeah. Beretta was on it. And, but uh, yeah, he, the guy came back and tried to kill me again. And I don't know, it was great. I, I looked like, I don't know what, but at least I was, I was not 
the fee for the, mm. the <laughs> as I say, didn't steal anything, didn't cheat, didn't lie. <laughs> but that was all Bobby Blake's doing. He's he said he came up to me at a party at Hugh Hefner's house of all places and said, Would you do a, a beretta? And I said, Yeah, of course I would. And he said, Well, I, I want to use you in the show like nobody else has. And yeah. I said, Okay. And yeah, when I went into wardrobe, we finally, you know, he found the script he wanted me to do and on and on. And I went into wardrobe and they're putting, you know, great, huge nuns habits on me. Um, I said, OK, I know I know where this is going. So it was, it was fun. It was fun. Well, and that's sort of the 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 thing that I think um, a lot of actors probably both hope for and sort of dread is that there'll be somebody in production who will say, I want to do something different with you. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, if you enjoy acting, which I do, um, I look forward to all those things. I said to um, a friend of mine that I've, I've done, I've now done four independent films for the same company. I said, if you have like a role for, a junkie, um, a homeless person, somebody, I said, anything that's like out, out of the ordinary, please, I would love to do those parts. So I, I enjoy it. I really do. Very good. What, uh, what among your, your work do you wish more people knew about and sort of, sort of had an idea of? Um, Oh, golly. I don't know. I'm always delighted when somebody remembers Wild Wild West or or Night Gallery. Um, I loved QB7. Not a lot of people know about that. It was it was such an amazing thing to be a part of, you know. Um, I don't know. There's so many shows that I can't say that there were any that I really didn't like. I mean, I was on Peyton Place for so long that you know, I, I, I did have several issues with a couple of people, but it's because you were there so long and it's, um, you know, it, get, it gets tough when you're all about the same age. And as I say, very feisty. Um, but it, I, I'm really, there isn't anything that I look back on and say, that was terrible and I'm sorry I was a part of it. Even the, ter even the terrible films that I've done, I go, yeah, but you know what? It was fun doing it. So yeah. I don't know what I'd, I'd like anybody to watch. Watch. I would almost think that some of the ones that weren't very good may have been some of the, the most fun ones. Um, maybe. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Not right. <laughs> I can think of a oh. horror film that, whew, wow. They put a whole new ha in horror. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, the monster that was chasing me bits of, of his fur would fall off as he was running and we'd have to stop and glue more fur on and oh my gosh do things like that it was like oh boy this yeah. is not good yeah. <laughs> yeah. but um you know it's work and sure. it's important i'm I, I can't bear not working um i once did a um a, a short called The Last Wish, where I played a woman in her late 80s who was in a hospital bed dying. And her last wish was to see the son that she abandoned when she was young and didn't care. And um, about a week before I was supposed to fly out to do that film, I broke my uh, fibula, my tibia, my ankle, and dislocated it all at the same time. So I had this huge cast on, yeah. and I said, I'll be there. And uh, I flew out there, and I had a rough time um, just moving around because I needed a wheelchair and stuff. And then when I was alone in my hotel room, it's like, how do I get off the sofa and to my bed? Yeah. Uh, I mean, literally standing up my piece of luggage and hanging on to that and you know, not stepping on my leg and latching on to this and that. And 
but I, I love doing it. You know, I still love doing it. So I, I mean, I'll, I'll work if I'm battered and broken and, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Tied up. Gag. <laughs> I'll still work. I'll learn sign language for God's sake. <laughs> it, you know, if my cat understands me, anybody can. Yeah, that's really the truth. <laughs> uh, Anthony, oh. who is one of the, the forces behind the show that runs uh, SpyCon, asks, uh, what's your favorite encounter you've had with a fan? My favorite encounter? Wow. Um, I've become extremely close dear friends with three people that I met at shows who came up to me as a fan and um I mean very dear not you know hi what did you do today but talking at at least every other day um people that I trust with everything and um, so I would shout out to Phyllis and Patricia and Sherry and um, couldn't, couldn't live without them. Very good. I'm sure they'll see this. Even if it's, if it's not live, they'll see a recording of it, I'm sure. So that's, I'm sure I hope not, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> because then all the other people could go, wait a minute. What about me? Rita should be on that list. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm serious. I, I have, I've, I've made wonderful friends. Um, but I have, as I say, three that became extremely dear to my heart. And um, it's been wonderful. It really has. That's really excellent. Yeah, when um, when we were able to be in the same place at the same time, I, I saw that you... Uh, we're very warm with everybody that you talk to. Um, you had a lot of great stuff on your table, on your merch table. Yep, yep. I still have an autographed picture here in my home um, that I that I framed and, and hung on the wall. And with uh, a, a black strip across it, or what, without the black strip? No black strip in my home. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no kids around besides Paco the cat, so he's uh, he's Paco you know, doesn't care. No, he doesn't mind at all. He's been making a good face. I wish I think this is this is when Lulichka is sleeping and and Peach, yeah, sorry. I would I would show you mine, but they're it's it's Mimi's time for them. Yeah. No, they'll they'll tell you if they want to be on camera. That's definitely <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially Lula. She yeah. she knows how she not only comes when she's called rapidly, she knows <laughs> how to sit on command sit up on command, high five. Um, she will fetch. Um, she, I, it, she's the most ridiculous cat that has ever lived. Yeah. She understands everything you say to her. Yeah. I, I worship her. I say it's, and I have wonderful doggies that I, that are just spectacular, but it's, it's Lula's house. <laughs> she owns it. It's, it's hers. Yeah, cats will play catch. They they like yes. that. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love it. I yeah. throw if she hears me opening anything paper, I've got to stop and tear off a piece and crumble it up and throw it down the hall so that she can run and then play soccer with it. Yeah. So she's very good at soccer. They're she fun. did the, the other day I was opening a, a a vitamin drink and I set the cap down. I barely set it down and she was sitting right there and I said, Lula, no. So she leaned back like this, and I picked up the drink. She grabbed that cap in her teeth and <laughs> ran. She was like, yeah, you said no, I didn't do it then, but the minute you weren't looking, she never found the cap, so I had to finish the drink. <laughs> Everything belongs to her. Uh, <laughs> Maybe she just wanted you to be hydrated. She wanted to make sure yeah, that you... Exactly. Sure. Yeah. I also found a hiding spot where she takes things and she hides them. And yeah. she'll come out and I'll say, where the heck did that come from? And then I see her scooting underneath behind the stove and into a cabinet. And I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's yeah. where her stash is. Yeah. I lose a lot of Sharpies that way. Yes. Yeah. I, Sharpies are some, good. There's some place here. And uh, although I never see any bugs here, he finds crickets. 
Oh. Uh, he's brought me like three crickets, and it's like oh. I, I don't know. Dead or alive? Uh, you know, half and half. <laughs> Oh now, my god. I had a cat that brought home a baby squirrel one time and I lost my mind. I got but he dropped it and I yeah. picked it up and I checked the fur, not a scratch, not a tooth mark, nothing. Oh and wow. I, but it was very, very young baby. So I went outside and I discovered I could hear another one screaming. It almost sounded like a bird. And it seems they'd been abandoned. They were very dehydrated. And I got a neighbor oh, yeah. kid to climb up the tree and bring me the other one. And uh, then we found one that was still in the nest. So I had three and yeah. we raised them until they were 16 weeks old oh, wow. and uh, then turned them loose. It was wonderful. Yeah, squirrels are pretty great. Oh, I love them. It's good. S silly wow. little things. It, it, it's it's quite a mental picture of you with a, a, a family of young squirrels that you've raised. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you this, but I, I used to stick one in into my shirt because it would curl up and go to sleep. Oh, that's so good. And I could walk around with a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have pictures. Good. I have pictures bottle feeding them and holding oh, them. Oh, my gosh. And... Yeah, please oh, yeah. post them. I would love to see that. That's really yep. good. I will send them to you. I would love to see those. That's fantastic. Okay. Uh, we have another question from an okay. anonymous viewer. We will call this person Ronald. And yes. Ronald asks, actually, I didn't know this, and I'm very curious about this. Uh, Ronald says, you dated Adam West for a while. What was that like? Was he Batman all the time? No, he was Bill. Yeah. Oh, he was. He was wonderful, very, very devoted father. I met his kids. Um, they had braces and were told that they couldn't eat candy yeah. when we had gone out to get a bunch of snacks and things. And so I would sneak them candy, which I never told him. But he was wonderful. I, I adored him. But he was on, you know, having a, a, a marital problem at the time and uh. went, went back to his wife, which I was very glad he did but yeah. great guy loved him funny fun to be around he was awesome i've got a wonderful picture of the two of us oh that's great yeah i'd like to see that too that's really wild. okay okay <laughs> <laughs> if you could just scan your entire photo album i think that you could probably make a book that i would i would gladly buy you'd love it you'd yeah. love it i've got some great stuff yeah, I can't imagine that there's probably some pretty amazing things in there. Yeah, Adam West is one that I'm a big fan of as well. I, I've always thought it was really cool the period after the show was over and he would still make appearances at, as Batman. Yes. And uh, there's one that's particularly great where he goes to Memphis to the, the wrestling studio and talks to Jerry Lawler in a Superman costume. And he's got his, his he's wearing a tracksuit and the mask with the cowl. Oh, and he, he's just, he never stops being Batman. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I think that's fantastic that he would do that. He would, he went on kids shows and. Right. That. That's no, he, really... was a, he was a terrific, terrific guy. Yeah. Very funny. Very, very funny. And as I said, a wonderful dad, really a, a wonderful father. Yeah. That's really cool. And he snuck his kids candy. Yeah, I did. That's so great. I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> There's always these great takeaways. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anthony asks, Lana, I know you turned down a role in five easy pieces and regret it. Uh, are there any others that you wish you had taken? Um, nope, that was about it. That, yeah. that, was, that was my... You've got to understand, though, at the time... Um, I had never stepped outside the influence of a major studio. Um, at the same time, I was offered a film at MGM, which was a more or less lighthearted, um, singles movie, trying to be a little edgy sort of thing. Um, and the other film with Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda, where they said, we don't guarantee dressing rooms. We're going to be traveling, not really sure where we're going. It's basically about, you know, 
bikers um, thing. And I got a call from my agent and he said, you know, these are talented guys, but I can't promise you anything, not yeah. anything. Right. Or you can go and do, you know, for singles only with uh, Milton Berle and the Beach Boys <laughs> and Leslie Gore and Marianne Mobley and John Saxon. And I said, and you'll be at a studio. And I went, yeah, yeah. I think I'd rather do that. That sounds because like a I was a chicken. I was I'm I'm I was never comfortable in situations that I didn't know. Yeah. Well, I and mean, I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I had but Karen Black should be very very grateful to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because Dennis Hopper as often as I would run into him many many years later he never forgave me. Oh, he said, wow. I, I wrote that part for you. I wanted you. We all wanted you to do it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it to this day. And I go, okay. Wow. That was how many decades ago? <laughs> we really ought to just sort of pass that up. Well, but you know what? I, I, I did what I was more comfortable doing and what I knew. Yeah. Well, and I don't think that there's any reason to hold that against you because so many of those movies that the Easy Rider movie came out of, yeah, were great movies. Oh you know, yeah, there's but, there's for, for every Easy Rider, there's a dozen uh, uh, just very forgettable. There, there's movies. the one I did. There's Demon Rage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Did so, you get to meet Leslie Gore on the other one? Um, yeah, I met, I played on, on, on stage too. I was, um, I jumped up there, uh, when I wasn't shooting and played tambourine with them, um, sang along. Um, it was wonderful. Peter Mark Richmond was my love interest in the show. I got to know John Saxon really well. And then Marianne and I became friends. Um, so many other people. I, it, it was, it was a terrific movie to make it really was and i was comfortable yeah. you know I, I i knew that i had a dressing room to go to and i knew it was all you know i i don't know i'm just i've i've never been um that brave yeah. i try but i've never been really brave well i i would say that you're definitely a, a very brave person and I'll, I'll see if you remember this story from the last time that we talked i hope that we okay might. We might end on this one because I, I really was moved by it. I thought it was great. Uh, you talked about a time when uh, when Natalie was going to go on Merv Griffin. Was that the show? Yes. Yeah. And what do you do you remember about that? Um, she had not done talk shows. Um, every time she appeared, it was scripted or pre-planned. Um, and she was really nervous. So she called me and she said, I don't know what to do. I don't know, you know, how I'm going to react or I, I don't know what to put on. And, you know, we chatted for a while and I said, just, you know, be yourself. Just whatever you say is going to be fine. Don't worry about it. So she went on and did the show, called me afterwards. And she, I said, how did it go? And she said, it was terrific. I felt you know, comfortable, and I was able to just slip into it. She said, I pretended I was you. That's so sweet. And I'll never forget that. I'll yeah. never, ever forget that, because I always thought of myself as I'm just a regular guy. Natalie was special. Yeah. Well, I think and you're pretty special. said that just really meant a lot to me. Yeah. Really meant a lot. Well, I think you're great, and I, I hope that our the viewers you better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic! Such a pleasure. Thank you. I right. think you're yeah. terrific too. I really do. I enjoy talking to you. Yeah, so you as well. Thank you, you as well. Yeah, so good to see you again. An hour just good flew by. You. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And if you didn't get that cup of coffee, I hope you get it soon. I'm gonna have a second cup. <laughs> <laughs> Reward yourself with a second cup of coffee. And I'm sending you photos. Please do. I'm so excited. I will. To see I will. Oh, 
all my love. Thank you very much for having me. You as well. Thank you, Lana. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.